it is 7.38. Are you an avid cycl cyclist or feeling some discomfort in your knees and back after a ride? Well, on this Staying a Step Ahead, we've got tips for avoiding further injury. Good morning. I'm Christine Gibbs from A Step Ahead Physiotherapy in Governor's Square. Thank you for joining me for another segment of Staying a Step Ahead. Cycling is becoming an increasingly popular activity here in Cayman. Whether you're a competitive athlete or using your bike as a transport to work, I'd like to share with you some of my tips on how to avoid any potential injuries to get you to your next time trial or simply to work on time. The two most common sites of pain, cyclists report, are knees and backs. Essential for knee pain is your seat height. The most common way to adjust this is to sit on your bike, put your pedal in the full downstroke position. Sit on the bike, put your foot on the pedal. You want a slight bend in the knee. It should be ideally about 25 degrees. However, if you don't have any device to measure this, make sure you have a slight bend in your knee. This will save your knee and your back from a lot of pain. Foot position on your bike is another reason for knee pain. If you naturally walk with your toes out, but you force your toes straight on your bike, you can mechanically cause knee pain. Make sure your feet are slightly toed out if this is a natural position for your feet. Tight muscles can also cause knee pain. Make sure your hamstrings on the back of your thigh and your iliotibial band on your outer thigh are sufficiently flexible. Another cause of knee pain is weakness in your glutes and your hip abductors. This will cause your hip, knee, and foot to track in the proper position when you're cycling. Your back naturally has a lordotic curve, which is an inward caving of the spine. However, on the bike, especially in aero bars, your flex forward. This causes a lot of strain on your back extensor muscles and increased disc pressure. So be aware of this if you've had a disc problem in the past. Similar to your back, your neck can get very tired from being down on aero bars. You're staying in an extended position the entire time. This can be intensified, especially if you sit at a desk all day. Another common complaint is wrist pain and numbness. A good way to solve this is cycling gloves. They're padded on the inside, so it protects your hands when you're on the handlebars. Also, good wrist position. Make sure your wrists are in neutral position, not like this. That puts your wrists in a really bad position for compression of those nerves that could cause numbness. Similar to your hands, your feet can also go numb or tingly. This is caused by a lot of pressure on the front of your foot when you're cycling. Now, I often tell people an easy way to fix the numbness and tingling in your feet, get some felt pads that you put on the inner surface of your furniture. Find where the ball of your foot meets the liner. Put the felt pad just behind the ball of your foot. Mark it. Put the felt pad just behind that. That's going to push up the ball of your foot, giving relief to the area. Good flexibility is key for staying fit on a bicycle. Every time I get off my bike, I just do some back extensions. Really reverse that flex position you've been in for so long. And then try a side bend. Bending over to one side, get a good stretch to the side of your trunk. Then, just cross one knee over, sit back, getting a good stretch to the glute muscle. Then you can grab one ankle, stretch your quad. And then if you can, put your foot up on the crossbar, lean forward, getting a stretch through your hamstring. To stretch your neck and arms, just pull one arm across in front of you. Do a side bend with your neck, really releasing that neck. A chin tuck. And get your tricep, just grab your elbow behind you. Now, keep in mind, I've shown these very quickly. Hold these stretches for 30 seconds and do both sides. Cycling is not just about your legs. Your core is huge. You need a good stable base to have power for your legs. Some exercises that I recommend are getting on your hands and knees and simply extending one leg and one arm at the same time. Hold for a few seconds and then switch. Make sure that you're not wobbling as you do this. Another good one is plank. Getting up on your toes and your hands. If this is too difficult, come down on your elbows. And lastly, do a side plank. Up on one arm, on your side. 
Your arms, especially your triceps, are also important in cycling. They will help take the load off your spine. However, you should not put all your weight on your arms. To exercise your triceps, grab a dumbbell, lean forward, and extend your elbow. Now, a common mistake is to swing your arm. You wanna just use your elbow. Then, grab two dumbbells, bend or sit, and extend. Now, this will also help your neck. If you keep your neck in a good neutral position, you strengthen those neck extensors that also fatigue on the bike. Lastly, I'd like to address safety on the road. Always wear your helmet. It does not matter if you're cycling competitively in a race, making your way to work, or going for a Sunday ride. If you fall off your bike, or worse, get hit by a car, your head needs protection. I've heard many people say helmets are for serious riders. I guarantee your head hitting the pavement will be much happier protected, no matter what your reason is for being on a bicycle. If you're cycling early in the morning or after dusk, please use flashers and lights. I even use them during the day to alert cars of my presence. I've seen numerous patients in the clinic who have been hit by a motorist who claimed they did not see them even in broad daylight. I have them on the front and on the back. I hope this information has been useful, whether you're a competitive cyclist, weekend rider, or commuter. Even those of you who don't own a bicycle will benefit from doing the exercises I have demonstrated. If you're experiencing pain during or after a ride, or have more involved cycling issue, please contact a Step Ahead Physiotherapy. Thanks for tuning in. Join me next month to continue staying a step ahead. See you on the road. If you'd like to get in contact with Christine or the team at Staying a, or a Step Ahead Physiotherapy, you can give them a call, 745-ASAP, that's 745-2727. You can also send them an email to info at astepaheadphysio.com. Their website is astepaheadphysio.com. You can also stop by their offices at Governor's Square.